Now, you know, there is a beautiful view here. And the best part about this view is that there isn't a single Maserati in sight. As a matter of fact, it should be a crime to own a Maserati, but it's not really a crime because it's a piece of shit. It's actually that they've built the perfect car for broke people. And I'm gonna show you exactly why 99% of people who buy Maseratis are broke here and here. You know, I would argue that this new Honda scooter is probably higher horsepower and more exciting and better built than any Maserati in the country. As a matter of fact, it's portable, it's fast, and it's exciting. And more importantly, it works. But you know what else it does that most Maseratis will never do? It's actually worth more than what you pay for it. This is a $1,000 scooter, and it's actually currently worth $1,500 and it works all the time. And it looks like a box, but you know what? At least it doesn't give you the false perception that you're anything more than you are like a Maserati does. So, I know I've, I'm kind of done insulting Maserati. So we're gonna get here and we're gonna look at why Maseratis are for broke people. All right guys, so let's take a look at why Maseratis are basically fake exotics and why they just don't work. Now, let's not look at just reliability, the fact that they're built like shit, they were partnered with Chrysler and basically half of the components are plastic trash. We've done this review for the MC20. We've done many reviews for some of these more exciting, expensive products they come out with and they have just been trash. Ever since the separation of uh, Ferrari and Maserati back in the day when 2010 and 2012 Quattroportes were somewhat of a Ferrari product and now they're basically a Chrysler product. This company has just gone down the toilet. I'm about to show you why. You see the average exotic as I teach you in Exotic Car Hacks. For those of you that don't understand, Exotic Car Hacks is a platform where we teach you exactly how to stop losing money on cars and ultimately give you an opportunity to learn how to drive your favorite exotic cars, not only without losing money, and in many cases being able to break even, make a profit, and so on and so forth. And so we invented this game back about 15 years ago, and we have taught now over 20,000 people how to do this. If you still don't know anything about Exotic Car Hacks, go into the description and you'll be able to click a link and not only learn how car hacking works completely free, but also join our community if that's something that is of interest or you've ever wanted to own an exotic car. But let's talk about it. what of the things I teach here, a critical thing I teach is that exotics basically depreciate just like all other cars, but then flat out and keep at a supply demand based on a certain price. And this price is what we call BCV, bottom cash value. I teach this in depth in the course, how to actually tell the BCV of cars, know when they're done depreciating and basically use that uh, as a leverage point in between, right? Super, super important to understand this methodology. You have to take the course to get this. But what I want you to understand today is that the average exotic basically comes here depreciates then holds right now super popular exotics go here and are collector cars so they just go nothing but up because they're on such scarce and uh, small supply so basically small supply high demand always stays up right but Maseratis do something very different you see the average normal car drops and depreciates and then over time just drops down to zero basically having no work that's why irregular cars cannot be hacked and are basically depreciating liabilities. However, exotic cars are assets because they stabilize and stole whole. Now, Maseratis do something very interesting. Not only are they exotic looking and exotic priced, but they follow a depreciation curve like a normal dead car, which means that they're eventually basically worth zero. And one of the reasons I did this depreciation curve in a very steep way is because one of the things that tells us that Maseratis are basically crap is that the dealer network that represents Maseratis also doesn't respect Maseratis enough to buy them back. This is the problem when you create an exotic and say it's mass produced. This is no different than the effect we've seen in the Tesla market when Tesla customers pretend that they're driving luxury cars when really they've been fooled that because what they're really driving is the next future wave of what they would consider Hondas and Maximas, but now in the form of Teslas that go really fast. So what Tesla did is give the false perception of hiding luxury behind tech, which isn't luxury because it isn't about craftsmanship. So, that said, Tesla is basically a fraud in the sense that it creates a false sense of luxury hidden behind tech, and so is Maserati. It creates a false sense of exotic cars hidden behind mass-produced 
garbage. So the reason it drops that hard, and one of the reasons that Maserati people are broke, is that they don't seem to understand how this depreciation curve works. You see, if an average car has about three years before it hits roughly about 50% of its value, where it kind of guts here, and then it starts to stabilize up and down from there, Maseratis don't do that. Within the first two years, they lose about 80% of their value, and then depreciate all the way to zero. So here's how dealers have basically combated this. We're gonna take a brand new Maserati Levante as a good example of this. A brand new, well-loaded Maserati Levante is roughly, let's say $130,000. Now this is brand new, $130,000 car. It gives you the false essence that this car is of high quality, it is expensive, and is something somewhat exclusive. They mass produced the crap out of this car. So this is the definition or the equivalent of what you consider an entry-level Maserati. At $130,000 though, what do you really get? You get a lot of plastic pieces, you get a lot of mass-produced crap, and a performing SUV that doesn't really get anywhere above or beyond any of its competitors. So why is it so expensive? And that is the whole scam behind the Maserati brand. That very same SUV on the very first day that is driven off the lot, that very first moment is worth at best $80,000 because the majority of Maserati money goes into its marketing. So 50,000 is not necessarily that it's a lot of money for marketing because Aston Martin is a very similar platform, but where you get this huge deficit is 50,000 is almost 30% of this number. And that's a pretty large gap to have for warranty and marketing into the base of your car, which means that the moment you drive off the lot with a Maserati, even if you save $10,000 or got a great lease, you just lost right about $50,000 on day one. There is no single intelligent money being on the planet that stinks that this is a good idea. Now, I wanna show you something even worse than this because this is what people don't understand. If you looked at Levante values on the internet today, like right now, if you look at what you can buy Levante for, that's maybe a 2022 well-loaded car, or 21, because we're now entering 2024, here's what you would see. You would see values listed right there at about $80,000. Dealers asking between 70 and $80,000 for the car, which would tell you that, hey, this is right in line with what PJ is saying, except that even dealers won't bank on this number because the trade-in value of this very same car with 10,000 miles, you ready for this, is $40,000. And one of the things that I want you to understand, that means in just two short years, right, this car has now worth 30% of its value just because of its production level. But here's the argument. The trade-in is 40, the selling price of the dealership is 70 to 80. What does this tell you? That the dealer network itself that sold you the car for 130,000 doesn't even believe in the value of their own car in the next year. And they know that the demand is so small for their crappy product that they have to look ahead of time and consider the fact that this car is gonna sit for such a long time, not only that it's gonna sit, hint being the margin being so high, and that its value is gonna continuously be compressed down. This is going to create a significant drop again for the car over the next few months as it sits. So the dealer basically tells you when they're trading in your own car at a Maserati dealer, not only I don't want your car, but I'm gonna hit it so low to guarantee that when it doesn't sell in the next six months, I'm just gonna break out and basically be able to walk away from it. Now the issue with this car is that in a few years, as you look at cars that are much older for the Maserati brand, they are so unstable and unsustainable from a a quality standpoint that basically they become worthless and nobody wants to deal with the cost of expensive repairs because what dealers will do is sell you parts at a cost of a $130,000 car for a cost of a car you could have bought for less than a Nissan Maxima after four years. So here's the argument. Now, if you are buying a Levante at Nissan Maxima pricing, aren't you technically clever or ahead of yourself? Well, not really because the product quality is so trash that the repairs usually will offset that and put you in a negative value. However, it will make you look cool in front of people who don't understand cars and who certainly just look at movies as a means of measure of what makes luxury real or not. That is why Maseratis are 99% of the time for brokies. Now, let's just keep in mind though, Maserati was once a very good brand. There was a moment in time in history where Maserati was not so mass-produced. It made sense and it rivaled Ferrari very, very well 
taking a lot from its heritage and doing its own thing. We had very good products that came out of Maserati. I mean, we know, for example, the MC from 2000. 18, 2016, those are good cars. Like they're now depreciated, they we're 150K cars, they're now depreciated. The new MC electric car is a $250,000 car, which makes no sense again, because it follows the same values again. And the problem with Maserati is not necessarily that it was once a good company and it's now a bad company and it might one day become a good company again. It's that it is not only a terrible company today with a terrible deal network that doesn't even believe in its own product and a terrible product to begin with, but it is a continuing product that is going downhill rather than uphill with most of its, again, production being mass volumized fake luxury. And this is why Maseratis are basically fake exotics meant for people who just don't understand exotics. And again, if you've been triggered by this video, I'm sorry, but here's a reality. We speak the truth at Exotic Car Hacks. Make sure you like the channel, even if you hate my thoughts, and make sure you give me your comments. Do you feel broke when driving your Maserati or seeing one on the road? Or do you think it is a respectable uh, car to actually own in the world of exotics? We'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. And again, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications for more crazy videos like this only at Exotic Car Hacks. Look. My name is Pejman Gadimi, and I teach people how to drive exotics for free. Let's look here at how this Huracan can cost as little as 300 a month.